Okay, um, watching some vids, correction for question 32. Um, the, the Vulgate was the language to the people at the time of Jerome. I said, yeah, I know. What did I say? He said that the EO is the only one in the first 1500 years that did. And I said, I'll call you when I get it at work. And if you just found I may be busy. I said, I'll do a video to clarify it then. Okay, cool, thanks. And then I remembered. I said, oh, yes. Now I remember. But the West was still Orthodox at the time of Jerome. Uh, by 1054, Latin was not the language of the commoners. I mean, you had... There were times when even the Aryans, like the Visigoths and the Vandals, had translated the um, Bible into Germanic. Um, If you say it that way, I understand. That's true. The Vulgate's still our official Bible, but we have many vernacular translations. Those didn't just start in the 20th century either. Anyway, I wish you well. Yeah, you know, the first English translation uh, was um, that was authorized was um, Catholic. It wasn't the King James, it wasn't the Geneva Bible, it was actually Roman Catholic. Um, I said, I will clarify, we consider the West fully Orthodox until between 900, AD 900 to AD uh, 1054. Um, you too, in fact, the West was more Orthodox during certain periods of time. Um, Rome didn't didn't fall into iconoclasm. Rome was the only see that didn't fall into iconoclasm. You had Alexandria, you had Constantinople, which was very iconoclastic. You had Antioch, you had Jerusalem, but Rome was the only see not to fall into iconoclasm. Um, I said, we love Ambrose and Gregory Dialogus. Um, and I put, you guys call him Gregory the Great. Um, and then he writes, that helps. Some of your vids left me with the impression that you thought we became apostates in the 5th century. Um, I misunderstood. I said, oh no, I will definitely clarify in the video. Um, well, my lunch break is over now. Uh, talk to you later. God bless. And done. Uh, that reminds me one, me one class I have is <clears throat> taught by a deacon who claims iconoclastic controversy was primarily of the fault of Islam. It reminds me of me of the they that Islam was another Christian heresy. Video idea? Question mark. Yes, I've actually made videos like that, but I'll make another video. We consider um, the Roman Catholic Church has Calvinism. Um, the Eastern Orthodox form of Calvinism is Islam. I said, yes, we'll do. Um, we'll do one on that one too. Thank you, brother. Um, no, it was by the 5th century, most of, almost all of the West could not speak Greek. And most of the East could not speak Latin. And you had ideas coming up, such as uh, you had uh, the influence of the great of, um, of Augustine of Hippo, who brought in things like original sin. And if you actually read him, the Catholic Church rejects a lot of his ideas because he basically goes almost all the way to total depravity and then just pulls back. He actually went all the way to the filioque and then pulls back and recanted that. Um, he brought in predestination. That's why a lot of people think that he was a Manichaean agent because of predestination and original sin. 
<coughs> not to mention the filioque. Um, and you had uh, you had different things developing, um, uh, different synods that were binding in the West, basically. Uh, so it was a long time coming, um, but the the seeds of division were sown in the fifth century. Um, but no, um, up until ten fifty four. We recognize all the saints in the West. Um, like I believe we, yeah, like Edward Confessor, St. Patrick. Um, now, there were some that had caused, that were caused for schism that we do not see as saints. Um, like we love Photius. Photius is our guy. Um, but yeah, I just want to clarify that is that the Eastern Orthodox Church, we talk about Eastern Orthodoxy. We mean the entirety of Christianity before 1054, before the papal break. All right? Peace to you, my guts, are Serbia, Syria, and Ireland.